So this video is going to be me building an RGB to HDMI converter. I saw this project on Adrian's digital basement and I thought this project would be really useful for me because I have no way of showing a digital RGB signal onto a monitor. So I plan on using this for the CGA output on my compact LTE laptop and also for the RGB output on the Commodore 128 so I can do 80 column mode. So I'm playing around with a new video setup. I've got my main cell phone right here, and I also have a cell phone taking video from above. Although the cell phone that's above is an older one and it can only do 720p, so I'm not sure how useful that video is going to be. So there's a PCB design for this RGB to HDMI converter, but I don't want to go through the trouble of ordering the PCBs and all that. So I'm just going to do something similar to what I did for my uh, OPO3 LPT knockoff board that I built. So anyway, let's get started. Okay, so I think I have all the parts I need laid out right here. So let me go through them. Okay, so I have the bill of materials from the wiki for this project on the screen. So for resistors, we need 1K resistors. I have some right here. Now, these are supposed to be surface mount because the actual PCB you know, uses the surface mount components, but I'm just kind of uh, making my own version of it. <laughs> so I'm going to be using through hole components. So I have my 1K resistors right here. I have the 10K resistors. And it wants uh, 4.7K 4 resistor networks. But I don't have those, so I have a bunch of uh, 4.7K through-hole resistors right here. And for capacitors, we need one 10 microfarad capacitor, which I have right here, and three 100 nanofarad, or 0.1 microfarad. So I have those right here, if you can see that. Actually, I have four of them laying right there. That's just for the decoupling of the CPLD. And speaking of CPLDs, here it is right here. And I actually ordered this back in uh, 2008. So I've been dabbling with CPLDs and FPGAs for a while. Not recently, but in the past I messed with them a lot. And by the way, all these parts I already had laying around. So I didn't order anything for this project. And that was the same way for this uh, OPO3 LPT board also. And for LEDs, they want two 3mm green LEDs. I just have red ones because that's all I found laying around. Oh, I probably didn't even mention yet that this project relies on the Raspberry Pi Zero, which I have right here. So I'm going on to sockets and connectors. Uh, a lot of these uh, sockets I don't need just because I'm doing this my own way, but I do need a way to connect to the Raspberry Pi Zero. I have this 40 pin IDE cable, so I'm deciding where to be, whether to use this or the, the female PCB headers. So obviously I don't know exactly how I'm going to build this yet, but uh, I'll be figuring that out soon. And also, I'm going to need four switches. I only have two of them here. I thought I had more, but uh, I'm going to have to pull some off some old project. But there are these kind of little push button switches. And for cables, this is what I'm going to use to connect to the CGA port. So I have a few other things on this table that I'm probably going to use for this project. Let's see if I can get it out of the bag. There we go. So I have a bunch of these little uh, perf boards. And I used one of those for this project. And also, I have a bunch of these adapters. So I need to adapt uh, the CPLD so it's through hole. So I'm going to use one of these adapters. I have two types of adapters. Uh, I'm not sure if the QFN ones are going to work, but I prefer these because they're smaller. But if I can't use those, then I'll just use the 
the TQFPs. The only problem is, you know, they're designed for up to a 100 pin, you know, chip, so. Okay, let's start out by opening this uh, CPLD bag, which has been sealed uh, for 13 years. Just a bunch of desiccant inside of there. And here is the chip. Okay, so I immediately see an issue. The pin spacing on this chip looks like it's maybe one millimeter, and these adapters are for 0.5 millimeter. Okay, forget what I just said. I do have an adapter. It's on this uh, TQFP board. If I just flip it over, it has 0.8 millimeter pin spacing, which is what this chip is. So let me just put it on there with these tweezers, which are terrible. Uh, can't even grab it. I use my fingers. But that should work. I just don't like how this is for a 64 pin chip or up to a 64 pin chip so there's a lot of a wasted uh, space there okay I went ahead and broke off the board that I needed so the chips on there I'm not gonna solder it yet because I don't even know what I'm gonna do yet let's get the Raspberry Pi get my perf board And I do something like this. I'm just taking the, the female sockets. And this board is really bent. Let me find a straighter one. This one's warped. These are all warped. Garbage. I'll just pick one. Okay, so I have these uh, female sockets. Oh, I just noticed the holes on this board aren't even drilled right. Okay then. Some of these aren't even etched right either. Holds are okay. I'm just gonna use this one. All right, so I have these uh, female sockets. They're two, two by twenty. So with both of them, they're two by forty, which is what I need to connect to here. Okay, so I guess I can do something like that, where it just goes on top of the Raspberry Pi. This is a pretty big board. Fact. I don't know if I even have enough clearance here, so this may not work. Alright, I'm just going to put the sockets all the way in there. Yeah, there's no way that's going to work. Yeah, that's not going to work. I could just do it like this. And put this board down here like that all right I think that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this so it's gonna be there's the Raspberry Pi there's the connectors and the CPLD adapter is gonna be on the bottom like that so I think that'll work Okay, let's start soldering some stuff. Turn on my soldering station. I need some water. I guess I'll drink some of this too. Okay. I'll do uh 
375 Celsius. I got my big tip on there. Uh, that should still work. Okay, here we go. Alright, let me straighten out this board. Do the opposite corner. That is extremely crooked. Uh, that's pretty good. Well, let me do some more pins. That's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and solder the rest of the pins. Alright, that's about done. Just gonna touch up a few that don't look that great. I mean, I'm gonna attach wires to most of these anyway, so it doesn't have to be perfect right now. Okay, so here's my soldering job. I mean, it's not terrible. Okay, so I'm gonna take off this adapter if I can do it without destroying this board. There we go. Alright, so... There's that. So now... I guess I'm gonna solder on this CPLD onto this adapter board. Okay, there's a couple of ways I can go about soldering this uh, CPLD onto this board. I could uh, just put a bunch of solder onto these pads and just uh, put the CPLD on top of there and use the uh, hot air to solder it onto there but uh, I think it will just be easier to just use the solder wire and just stick it on there and solder each pin individually so I'm going to use my crappy tweezers if I can even grab this come on Ah, forget this. Use my fingers. Okay. Line up pin one. Tack on one corner. Actually, what I'm going to do first is uh, put some solder on that pad. And then put the chip in place. I can. Come on. Let me just melt that pad. There we go. That's almost perfect. Do the opposite corner. And that is perfect. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and solder all these together. Now, this tip is kind of big. Uh, whatever. You know what? I have an idea. I'm gonna need do. I'm gonna do some drag soldering. I need flux. This is just some really old Kester 951. Uh, whatever, just drench the thing. Get a nice blob on there Man, maybe this was a bad idea pretty much soldered all those pins together wow oh, I, just, I should have just done it like that one pin at a time 
I might hit it with some hot air at the end just to make sure everything is nice and neat. There we go. Just trying to get rid of these solder bridges. All right, I made a big mess of this, so I broke out the solder sucker. Seems to work with surface mount also. Just gotta melt the solder and suck it up. All right, gonna break out the helping hands. Not the hot air gun. Put the nozzle on. I'm gonna move this away from the wall. Don't want to burn the wall up. I'm gonna do 400 Celsius. Actually, first. Yeah, soldering a chip like this usually isn't uh, this much of a hassle, but it's just, I haven't done this in a while, so it's being a pain. Alright, here we go. I'm just doing this to clean up the solder joints. Alright, beautiful. Okay, and there's my soldering job. It looks perfect right now, but before I did the hot air, it looked terrible. So, yeah, using the hot air really cleaned things up. Okay, so I have some pin headers right here. I'm gonna attach them to the board. This is a 44 pin chip. So each side is 11 pins. Yeah, I don't need this many uh, pin headers on there. I need to grab my cutters. The handle's broken, but it uh, still works. Jeez, that went flying. <laughs> that one went behind the desk. Oh well. Okay. Turn my soldering iron back on. I don't know why I turned it off in the first place. Alright, here we go. i to make sure that's straight. Check if this is going to line up correctly. So far, so good. I might have been able to uh, do this. Put it, put the this board over the Raspberry Pi. Let's see. If I remove these two pin headers right here, it could work, but it's cutting it really close. There's almost no clearance. So I'm just going to stick to to the original plan. All right, the pin headers are on.
You know, I hope there's not too much like noise coming from these traces connected to nothing on the bottom side. Uh, we'll see. That went in a bit tight, but it'll work. Okay, now I gotta solder all these pins onto this perf board. Okay, I got some spools of wire out, so this is going to turn into a rat's nest of wires because there's a ton of uh, wires that need to go from this connector to the CPLD. So that's going to take the majority of time for this project. So I'm going to start with the power and the ground. I'm going to use this slightly larger gauge for the power. Got my wire strippers here. This is 26 gauge, stranded. I'm just trying to plan out how I'm going to do this. Let's just start by making some, making some solder bridges here. So this pin in the corner is 3.3 .3 volts. Alright, pin 15, 26, 35 or 3.3 volts on the CPLD. Well, I don't have to get too fancy with it. All right, let's do this. Actually, change of plans, I'm just gonna go through the top. Just gonna cut it right there. This is going to be really tedious. There we go. So that's what I got so far. So this is going to be the last 3.3 .3 volt. And I'm going to do the ground. Alright, there it is. There's the three uh, wires for the BCC and now I have to do the ground and then I'll go on to all the signal wires using the the blue was this the Kynar wire 30 gauge this is really thin stuff but I'm not going to take video footage of everything because the clips are just going to be way too long and it's going to take forever to edit so I'm going to stop it here and then start, start it up again when I make some progress. Alright, I've got the ground pins hooked up now. And I also started putting some buttons on there just to figure out how I'm going to lay this out because it's going to be a tight fit for all these components. Alright, time for the 30 gauge Kynar wire. I'm going to put this wire straight onto the pin headers and just do pretty much a direct connection, maybe with a little bit of slack. And uh, this is going to take a while because there's like probably like 30 wires that I have to do. So, yeah, wish me luck. Now it's a pain in the butt to figure out where the pins are because the numbering on these. Uh, Breakout boards only match if you're using a 64 pin chip, but this is a 44. Alright, first data line done. 
about 30 more to go. Okay, I'm going to cut the video off here, and when they make some progress, I'll start the video up again. Alright, I'm about halfway done, and it's taking forever, but I knew it was going to take forever. Uh, this wire going off to the side is for one of the buttons, so I haven't soldered that one yet. I still haven't figured out the final position for these. And also I made a, almost made a huge mistake with the pinout. And uh, basically all of these were off by one. So the voltage and the ground were going to the wrong pins. And if I left it like that, you know, the thing would blow up. So, so good thing I figured that out and fixed it. So I just have to finish wiring everything up now and that's probably going to take another hour. Alright, almost finished with all the data lines. Actually, I have finished. These last two are for LEDs. No, they're for switches. Alright. Alright. Looking pretty good. Okay, there it is. Let me push these uh, wires down. They don't need to be up like that. The first couple of wires I did were a bit too long, but everything else is pretty good, it's pretty neat. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Alright, so there it is. So now I have to do the switches, the LEDs. Uh, the connector is a big one because that has a bunch of resistors. The connector for the CGA, that is. Okay, so I'll be doing that next. Alright, I've been sitting here for a while trying to lay this board out in my head. And I think I got it figured out. So, all the resistors for that CGA connector, they're going to go on this side. And they're going to sit vertically like that. So I'm going to have eight of them lined up right here and two of them like sideways so that's a total of ten resistors and all the buttons are going to be on this side there's going to be three buttons there's a fourth button on this schematic but I don't think I need it and I'm going to put the LEDs in this corner right here so let's get going Last resistor. Okay, there's all the resistors soldered. I just gotta snip off all the leads. Alright, that's good enough. Alright, I didn't get it on video, but I connected ground to all these resistors. I just joined them all together with blobs of solder. So that's all ground right there. And the connector is going to go on this side. I already put solder over the holes. I'm just going to stick the wire through and heat up the solder at the same time. I'm a little bit confused how this uh, CGA connector goes on though because the schematic says uh, red, green, blue, B red, B green, B blue but their uh, cables page on their wiki for the IBM PC, CGA, EGA, Commodore 128 uh, it says like red 1, blue 1, green 2, red 2 so basically the nomenclature is different so, I gotta figure that out first before connecting this thing. Okay, I'm looking at Wikipedia and I'm looking at the pinout for the CGA connector. And I think I have a pretty good idea how this works now. Uh, I'm gonna assume that on the schematic, B green is going to be intensity. So, I'm just gonna do that. 
So pin one and pin two are ground. So I guess the first thing I'm gonna do is tin all these wires. Actually, I'm gonna see how the connector is on my laptop. Okay, so I want it in this orientation. So it's not, I don't have to twist it when I plug it into the laptop. Here we go. Okay, that's pin one and two onto ground. I'm just gonna do the rest of them. All right, I'm making just a quick change. Um, I'm removing pin two from ground because I guess that's used on on the EGA connector is actually used for color so I guess I'll wire it up for EGA even though I don't have anything with an EGA card in it all right that connectors on there okay there it is Alright, I just went ahead and soldered all the wires from the connector to the resistors by just joining them with a solder blob. Okay, now I'm going to connect the wires from the connector to the CPLD. Here we go. Alright, I just finished wiring up the connector completely. And there it is so far. So all that's left are the buttons, LEDs, and the capacitors. Now on the schematic, there's an X1, X2, X3, and X4. I don't know what those are. Maybe they have to do with the analog board that I'm not going to use. So I'm going to leave those out for now and just finish this thing. Just going to check the buttons. I can never remember uh, which way they go. Okay, so that side is connected. So I'm going to wire up the buttons, even though I need to find one more. Alright, I salvaged another button from an old project, and I'm just going to start connecting them all up. Alright, so it's the next day. I just had to take a break from this project because I spent like five hours on it last night and I was just getting tired. But I did finish uh, connecting all the buttons up. So there's the three buttons and those are the three pull-up resistors that I put on the other side. And now I just need to do the LEDs and the capacitors and then I gotta figure out how to program the CPLD. So these two wires I left floating here, if you can see those, are for the two LEDs. And here are my two red LEDs. They say to use green, but these are all I have. And they want a 1K resistor for those. Seems kind of high, but I'm just going to do it anyways. Okay, I'm going to start soldering the LEDs on.
right, so that whole, this whole edge of the board right here is ground. All right, soldering the resistors in. All right, connecting the resistors to the LEDs with the solder blob. You just need to connect the GPIOs to the resistor. And that's mostly it. Okay, I believe that is done. So I gotta figure out how the JTAG programming works from the Raspberry Pi. So there might be a few more wires I have to connect, but uh, yeah, I'm almost done. Actually, I'm not quite done. I still have to do the capacitors, connect the JTAG, and I think I'm going to end up connecting those uh, X1, 2, 3, and 4s. I think they're required. So, here we go. I'm going to use these old surface mount capacitors because I can just solder them right onto the top of this board here. So I'm just going to bridge this capacitor between the ground and the VCC because the pins are adjacent to each other. At least on two of them. So you see what I did there. Just stuck that capacitor, that little surface mount capacitor right in between the pins. All right, a little precarious how I did this one, but it should work. All right, I'm going to put the large electrolytic capacitor right here. Probably can't even see. And I'll just put it on anyway. All right, there it is. Okay, I believe it is completely done now. I didn't take any video footage of it, but what I did was connect those X1234 lines, and I connected all the JTAG lines. I added the pull up or well, pull down resistor for the TDI pin, and what else? And I added another pull down resistor on this side for the detect pin. So I think that's everything. So here's the final product. Pretty clean on this side, but this side's a rat's nest. And unfortunately this is the top, but that's okay. Okay, so what I do before powering on anything that I built is to check if the VCC and the ground are shorted. So let's just probe right there and over here. I'm not getting anything. Just checking various places. I think we're good. So these grounds, oh well these grounds aren't connected because they're connected on the Raspberry Pi. I think we are good to at least power it on. I do need to copy the SD card image onto the card, so I'll do that right now. Alright, here's the moment of truth. I'd be surprised if this works because of this rat's nest of wires here, but it's all connected together. I have my Compaq LTE laptop right here, and this has CGA output, so let's get started. Okay, I am plugging in the power. Alright, I see something. An LED turned on. Okay. Okay, at least this works. An LED did, did turn on on the board. So, let's see what's up. It says CPLD is unprogrammed. Select correct CPLD. I believe this is the 
6-12 bit one. So let's see if the buttons work. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I guess I want to do that. All right, let's program the CPLD. Erasing, programming. Come on. I have no idea if this is going to work or not. Successful. Rebooting. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> okay, so I guess I can plug in the connector now for the CGA. This thing. There is an LED blinking on the board. So. Let's see. All right, the CGA connector is in. I am turning on the laptop. Okay, I'm not seeing anything on the screen. I might need to configure something on the laptop. I mean, this LED on this board is blinking like crazy. I don't know if that's normal or not. Let's see. It says no sync detected. I guess I can move this computer over a little bit so you can see that. going into the compact configuration utility I'm gonna see if there's anything I need to do in the setup to make this work I'm seeing nothing at all and that's not a good thing all right I just got to work I spent like half an hour just looking over the wiring making sure I didn't make any mistakes I couldn't see anything wrong so I just uh, looked online to see if there was some way I could activate the external monitor on this LTE laptop. There's nothing on the keyboard that would suggest that you would have to enable the external monitor, but apparently you press Control, Alt, and the little left arrow symbol. And I found that on some obscure website. So it's a little bit wavy right now. So let me try to correct that. Okay, I just did the auto calibration and it looks completely stable. Let me let me exit this menu. Look at that. All right, so this thing actually works. First time, I didn't even mess anything up. All right, let's see if I can run a game. Hmm. Let's try Jill, Jill of the Jungle. Look at that, I got colors. Let me see if I can focus there. Yeah, I'm not sure how well it's coming out on the camera, but I can see a bunch of colors. This is awesome. This is working great. Of course it runs really slow on this uh, 8086. How do I play this?
All right, let's try something else. Let's try some battle chess. Whoops. Look at that. Man, even with that rat's nest of wires, the video, the display is still completely stable. That's amazing. I forgot how to play this. What do I press? There we go. Let's try to get some combat going on. All right, kill my pawn. <laughs> it's been a long time since I heard that. Alright, Commander Keen. Of course, here's Lemmings, one of my childhood favorites. Of course, I played it on VGA, but this is also nostalgic. The controls are kind of weird. How do I go left and right? Okay, there we go. All right, so that's another successful build. There it is right there, connected to the Compaq LTE 8086 laptop. Thank you to the developers of the RGB to HDMI, and thanks for watching.